There are certain photos that are so monumental, so perfect in capturing the hopes, victories, defeats, and even tears of a generation. Photos that will forever transcend time and style. Photos that have worked tirelessly to claim their rightful spot and can stand alongside the finest artwork and hold their own. Images that show us that photography is every bit as artistic despite no painter's brush ever touching a canvas. And their amazing qualities in the composition and the moment they capture, not the countless filters applied or the fake skies added in later. These truly are images straight out of the camera. Growing up, my father had a collection of Life magazines. For those of you who don't know, Life magazine specialized in photojournalism and predominantly ran from 1936 to about 1972. And I venture to say that many of history's iconic photos were born out of Life magazine. And I can't think of any modern day equivalent medium that so captures the essence of the moment caught forever by their photos. Now, the photographers of Life magazine are far too many to mention, but include some of the greats. Margaret Burke White was Life magazine's first female photographer, and in 1941 she gained access to the USSR, where she took Stalin's picture for what was to become one of their famous cover photos. After the war, she went to India, and she captured this iconic photo of Mahatma Gandhi, which many of you may recognize. Alfred Eisenstadt captured the essence of the end of the war in his sailor kissing a nurse photo, or Henry Walker's famous silhouetted image of Kennedy talking to his brother. Life was never shy to confront the issues of our times, and many photos were actually quite violent in their realism, capturing horrific moments over various wars and generations. And growing up as a young boy, barely seven or eight years old, these images stayed with me for life. And while the photos captured moments long before my time, they have their own nostalgia for me. As I look through the photos, I remember paging through my father's collection, reminding me of that comfort and security that only exists in your youth and is rarely ever recaptured in life, the power of a photo. And with that backdrop, it brings me to the topic of this video and why I want to move away from portrait photography. First though, if you are new here, I would appreciate your support. You know, through a like, uh, love the comments or a subscription, it really means the world to me and gives me that energy to keep going. Now, back to this video, when you look at these iconic photos, I personally find classic portrait photography by comparison quite boring. Sure, when it's Margaret Burke White taking a portrait of Stalin, that's different. But in my day-to-day -day life, I want to capture my family, but not necessarily as they look. I want to capture them in a moment. After all, when I look back 20 years from now, I want to relive those moments, those memories, and portraits really allow us to do that. The most exciting, the most enduring and endearing photos are those that sum up a moment of time, that sub-second of a shutter allowing us to forever have a view into that little piece of history that has forever passed us by. This remarkable combination of aperture, ISO and shutter speed that makes time stand still forever. And in that contract context, portraits may well capture the look of someone but it really captures the moment. We spend so much time getting people to pose for the camera, to look directly into the camera, and to put up a front just to take a photo. How different do you think the sailor kissing a nurse photo would be if it were just the two of them posing and staring straight into the camera? Or how much more real this is seeing Audrey Hepburn looking at the Oscar that she just won back in 1945? We see more emotion than we ever would have had she been posing for a portrait. Of course, I'm not a Life magazine photographer and I'm hardly capturing pivotal moments in world history, but I have my own world to capture. Here's a picture I took of my wife and daughter and allow me to explain the moment. It was a cold Sunday morning. We had just gotten bagels. In fact, you can see the bag in the foreground and I'd made some great lavazza coffee. 
And the surprised reaction on both their faces is that at that very moment, my daughter was reaching for my wife's cup of coffee and my wife was trying to deflect it and prevent it. And this is what I mean by capturing a moment. It tells a story far more than a portrait would ever tell. A situation where a picture truly is a thousand words. Whenever, whenever I see this photo, even 30 years from now, I'll clearly remember the moment and the story behind the image, the smell of the coffee, the freshness of the bagel, and the actions of my daughter and my wife. Or this photo of a stray cat coming to our window, which we now feed, and our daughter interacting with the cat. Her face is not visible, but I wasn't trying to capture her look. I was trying to capture the moment. I wonder if in her later years she will remember this cat even vaguely when she sees these photos that we took, when we captured those moments. So my personal project this year is to capture this style of photo, this style of capturing moments and not these posed portraits. I want to forever freeze certain moments of my daughter in time. I intend to have them all printed physically and bind them in a book at the end of the year. And I may even make one every year cataloging her early years, but fast forward 15 to 20 years, being able to page through these books, it's gonna be an avalanche of memories. And while portraits are nice, they simply don't reveal those moments in our lives that really matter. I hope that one day, as she has her own life filled with her own moments and I've long since passed on from this world, that she will cherish these moments as much as I've cherished capturing them.